So I'm here at the Tommy Douglas 2021 Disc Golf Tournament, Tommy Douglas Open, yes. with Arlen and Jerry, yes. who are Disc Golf Saskatchewan famous, oh. and maybe even becoming more known in Western provinces for sure, because last year they played every single course in Saskatchewan. Yes. Do you want to tell us a bit about how that came about and what that journey was like? Um, so basically, on my birthday, we just kind of did a map out of about five different courses near Regina that we could kind of hit and make it a very unique birthday. And we hit those and we started brainstorming. I'm mapping out different courses of the province and I came up with a plan that we could hit. I think the idea at the time was to hit like 34, 35 courses in the summer. But as we progressed and we realized how long it took to do some of these courses, we had add more courses to the list until uh, what was it October uh, no December 27th I think we chalked up the last one of Saskatchewan yep. at Leoville when it popped up in the middle of December so we managed to get them all done and I think it was a great success yeah. and it was so much fun whether we were out there with snowshoes or not because <laughs> there was there was some where you know there was tea pads that were shoveled out and we were standing four <laughs> feet above the ground on snow so <laughs> And we, we've talked about this quite a bit, and so I kind of have a good idea of some of the courses, your favorites, some of the highlights. One thing I wanted to ask though, so 2021, I know there's been new courses being added. Yes. So at least you've done, you know, all of them that you could, and now it's like every time one's added, a little easier to go to that. You don't yeah. have to plan a yes. big trip, but what are, what do you think of the new ones that have been added so far this year? Ah, uh, it's almost hard to keep up. They just keep popping up now, and I think that's awesome. I love it. I would like to see it some year where we can't complete the rest because they just keep coming up so fast. Um, they're great because there's some hard, challenging bush ones like up at Kipling or Moose Mountain. Yep. And then there's some really beginner friendly at like Buena Vista. So I love it. And you know, it, it's the one thing is it, it's, it blows your mind how quick they're going up. Um, you know, uh, Moose Mountain at, at uh, uh, Kenosi, yep. they, they were super, super motivated to get it in the ground. There was straight bush you couldn't see 40 feet through, and you're tying ribbon, tying ribbon, and they were in, you know, cutting lines to get it through, and they'd have a basket placed in hours. Yeah, it went, um, they were progressively And then fast even, on it. you know, Bona Vista, just 40 minutes down the road, it's a, a little niner, and it was the village that put it in, and, you know, they, they put concrete tee pads in within months. Wow. And now they're going to get Buffalo Pound because yeah. they have a tournament coming up where it's going to be a champions uh, style 18 course. It's yeah. a par 63, I think. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be good. <laughs> Eight or 9,000 feet. Yeah. I know a lot of people don't know this, especially people from Saskatchewan, but the first known instance of disc golf was playing in, was played in, in Saskatchewan yep. back in the 1920s. Do you want to tell us a bit about that town and what happened there? Uh, so, oddly enough, we stumbled across it when my mom shared our story out and her friend commented about how disc golf all began in Bladworth, Saskatchewan. And we were planning out the ending of this tour and I'm like, oh my goodness, I had no idea that that was, you know, yeah. in Saskatchewan. What a great feature we have for disc golf. And I said, we should do a pop-up course as our finale course. In, and we did it in the summertime. It's a beautiful feature that this guy and his friends in elementary school, it was tin lid golf. They threw tin lids into little circles in the sand and I think it's awesome. And that's, the, the cool thing was, was when we did do that uh, Bladworth pop-up, we literally just took our portable basket with us. We, I, I, I had made a little wooden, little, a tee. Uh, we'd slam it in the ground, put a little Saskatchewan flag on it. And that was our tee box and we played it right through the town like you know empty some empty lots back down the alley towards the the, the you know the, the the saskatchewan pool elevator yeah. um you know it, it was it was a pretty cool experience and, and, and we, we had a few people stop us like, what are you guys doing like what are you why are you here and they're like oh well you know um they this is where you know the sport all began and like, oh, that's not here and we said oh, uh, you know it was you know, at the old school, yeah. and they're like, oh my goodness, that is here. Yeah. And it, it was, it was kind of, it was And we cool. finished at the school. We yeah. made sure we got a little bit of history and we yeah. found the location so that that would be our ni ninth basket placement. So 
got to utilize some history of her. <laughs> and like so Jerry Ann went above and beyond. She was phoning like town halls and mayors. Like, I so did, where yeah. would I find this place? Where would I find the old school that's been ripped down for 50 years? So. I did do a lot of phone calls and emails and messaging through, uh, through social media. It's something I, I think you can only do in this decade you couldn't have done this 20 years ago and got that history of it so. yeah and i remember there was a course that um you had to contact the owner or something what was that oh there's yeah, yeah there's actually two private courses that we had to hit so there was hanley and then there was cold Tenenchuk. yeah so like we got permission and they welcomed us on the course and they took us out but hanley was the most unique one because it was an object course and there was one where you had to land on a trampoline <laughs> but that trampoline became a tee pad for the next one where you had to jump in mid-air and throw the shot and if you weren't in mid-air you had to re-tee so very creative I loved that I love that and because like mini golf has you know the, the fun things like the windmill and that kind of stuff yeah. but it still has to be flat and has to roll but disc golf because it's in the air you know, a lot of different things and <laughs> if you actually look at a basket the portable end of a basket it says target Yep. which means yes. any target. So you played the Lost Egg, which was a really cool chorus. Unbelievable. Such a great <laughs> and it, it's, it's, I, like I was, I've been telling people this weekend, if you ever have a chance to play the Lost Egg, yeah. do it. Yeah. Whether whether it's in a tournament or not, the tournament I would recommend, recommend doing it in a tournament. It makes Amazing. It, yeah. And I know you had, each time we've chatted, we've talked about favorite courses. Are there any new favorite courses? The one that really stood out to me was the Cemetery. Oh, um, that's humble. And humble, yeah. 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 Okay, so like every course that we played has a little memory that we get to take from it, and yeah. I love that. So that one is rememberable because you could, that's a great course to do on Halloween or near Halloween. You could do a glow round and put little candies near the basket for the kids. Like, I loved that for that yeah. reason. Yeah. I mean, but like you've got Danielson where they have Canadian flags on the top of their basket. Yeah. That's like iconic to us. So, I mean, I don't know if we have any new favorites. I think Jackfish will always have our heart in Saskatchewan. Yep. It, and um, I, it's a good comparable to something like the Lost Egg, yeah. where the Lost Egg is, the is Badlands, yeah. and yeah. You're, you're playing you know, cliff sides and hoodoos kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, yeah. uh, North Balfour to Jackfish, it's you know massive hills into the valleys and back up and down, and it's a lot of that elevation yeah. play where you really have to lo uh, learn your upshots. Yeah. And your 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 down throws, where you know something that's 250 feet, I, I need a driver for, yeah. but it's 250 feet down. Yeah. I'm throwing a putter lightly, <laughs> so yeah. game changer. Yeah, it's, it it's mind-boggling. I think like in like we did a couple courses, uh, more than a couple, quite a few courses in Alberta, and I think when people are saying, "Hey, I'm going to Alberta. What courses are you hitting?" I would always say like I think Baker. Yep will stand out always especially that what is it hole three that beautiful island shot um i hear they might not have that for long so that's a heartbreaker uh cam war the, yeah. the nordic center unbelievable Unreal. Yeah. like yeah that's worthy of we played it early spring notch. so there was still lots of snow and everything was melting and there's like you know babbling brooks everywhere and it was absolutely gorgeous but okotoks i liked their course too they have a good concept of uh, two different lines. So you walk on the course and you know what line you're playing today. Yeah, they have little signs, you know, this week we're playing, you know, the A's, A's and next week's the B's. Yeah. It's, a, it's an interesting idea because for people to not, there's a lot of people that have never explored Canada. You know, yeah. they've been to Mexico, they've been to England, China, all over the place, yeah. never explored Canada. And an easy way to do that is just choose a bunch of disc golf courses, go play those yeah. courses, explore the towns. You know, yes. Prince Edward Island has some amazing, amazing courses. Yeah. One day um, we'll get there. BC, like there's some courses now in the Yukon. It's just, it's really interesting what's happening. So since getting into the sport, first being introduced by your friend and then getting to play, you're now actually helping grow the sport um, on a larger layout, on a larger scale. So tell us a bit about how that's been going. I didn't, I don't know if, I didn't know we were doing that, I guess. <laughs> I didn't, I, I don't see what other people are seeing. Yeah. So I'm just like, I'm just trying to grow the sport mainly in a, the female division yeah. and the juniors. That's so huge. Yeah. And like a perfect example is, you know, we were at the Escape Sports Open and it was a great tournament, very well ran. And you're seeing these pro women, there's first, second and third, and the third doesn't get anything. Mm -hmm. And so I looked at her when she was like heartbroken, she didn't get her name called up. And yeah. I said, that is why we got to grow the sport. Yeah. We need to have your name called for being third place because that's, 
you know, amazing and you should be honored by that. Yeah. And, yeah. and so it's so important. And I played at the Sask Open and I played with some new females and it just was so much fun. And afterwards I messaged them and say, Hey, I really loved meeting you. And, yeah. and they say, like made a comment about, I was so excited to have you on our card nice. the first round. Nice. And I'm like, I was so excited <laughs> to have you on my card. So I'm glad that that was a very mutual experience. Yeah. And, um, I don't know, I get co-workers and friends who don't disc golf say, when I think of disc golf, I think of you and your face and that just, that warms my heart. But I, I want to see it so that I blend in more and, you know, we can celebrate the other females that deserve to be celebrated. So. When I love that you're now involved, I think it was the Regina Disc Golf Club, yes. Saskatchewan Disc Golf. Yes. Because that's really, I think, where we can start making some changes is the more people, and there's a lot of people in Canada with a lot of land. Yes. They're not going to put a golf course on their land, but a disc golf course, that might make sense. Yeah, but so you... I actually got a message from a golf course okay. wanting to do a pop-up disc golf course on their property cool. at year end. And I'm like, this is what we should be doing, like at the beginning of the season, at the end of the season, and maybe doing tournaments to grow yeah. the sport and maybe do a transition of like golf players into disc golf players. And yeah intermingle the two and enjoy it and you know it was as easy uh a, a friend of ours maddie he uh just put in a, a tonal at it, it's just kind of around the borden area yeah. um it's a, a new pop-up or a new course he started a regional out, park and it's in a regional park it's yeah. their old golf course that nobody has played in years so it's this old land that is, is an access because it's they don't have the funding to run the yeah. grass green so nobody wants to go there or for, for, for whatever reason. And the wa yeah, the watering costs. And the, and yeah. it's, it's so yeah. costly to, yeah. to do that. And you have a park like this. They don't water here. Um, they do maintain it with mowing and, yeah. and, and But this is a great stuff. fairway for us. And it's, yeah. it's, it's great. Really it, it's, yeah. And that's the thing. It's fairway and trees is what we want. <laughs> yeah. So, and he went in and it started out with, with rebar with some, some uh, uh, flaggers tape on it. Yeah. He's now got propane tanks rolling. That's cool. Um, yeah, his dad and, helped him out and... Uh, created a more cost-efficient way to do a tonal. So. Um, and that's the thing, like we, we helped out with some fundraising for Melville to get uh, the baskets. Uh, baskets this year instead of moving from the propane tonals. So over over 70 courses I think now in Saskatchewan. Oh, well, we're almost in the 80s. Almost yeah. in the 80s. Yeah. So would you say it's, you know, 75% tones, 25% baskets, 50%, 50%? Oh. It's probably, it, it's 50-50-ish. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, and, and there's everything. The baskets are growing more. Yes. So that's actually quite interesting. Just replacing the tones of baskets. Yes. Well, yeah. when they open up a course, a lot of the places that are opening, they want to open with the baskets. Yeah. Where before, they're skeptical and they're not sure it's going to be popular, yeah. so they'll open with a tonal. So the newer courses are popping up with baskets, which is huge, awesome. I think. So. Anyway, there's, there's some. Uh, uh, Sasquatch Alley out towards Valcaris. Yeah. Um, they, they run five-gallon pails. Yeah. And it, it's great. It's, it's, it's a cheap entry yeah. into getting a course. Yeah. Um, like you can spend as little as a few hundred dollars all the way up to a few, you know, 10,000 if you yeah. want and anywhere in between to put a course in. So and have it, you two designed your own course yet? So yeah. we've no. assisted, we've assisted <laughs> yes, with we this golf Saskatchewan. Nice. Okay. The pop-up course and you did. And we did, uh, uh, so in Regina there's, we do this kind of, it's, a friend of ours named it the Basket Brigade. Oh, cool. Um, we had, we've done three of them so far. Yeah. We were involved in designing one, um, <laughs> and she named it. Is that the one you got the ace on? Uh, no, so that was one? a legislative uh, layout that the Regina Disco. Oh, okay. uh, I won't take credit for that. That was mainly uh, Paul Eviser that did it. Yeah. Um, and Eric Tessier, I think, helped. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I don't know, we put our basket out on a hole and. I got an ace there and a tag round, and I'm very proud of that. And you know what? <laughs> to do it, we had somebody went in, and in that case, it was Paul. Yeah. Um, we got 18 people together with yes. portable baskets, and you, you see them around the course here today. Mm -hmm. You set them up. We, we rolled it out, and we had a great time. People are into it. Like, to get a new course set up and to be a part of that, people want to be a part of it. So, like, when we did, we did the A.E. Wilson... Just as a, he had this design like two years ago. So when it came to an opportunity to do it, he jumped on that and we just got 18 people to bring baskets. And we, we ended up doing a fundraiser for one of my dear friends who was doing a kidney walk and she had a kidney transplant a just prior. over a year prior. And 
it raised so much money for her that we saw a potential of more fundraising. Like, that's what disc golf is all about. It's not about making money. It's about growing the community and and taking the money that you have and growing the sport with it. So, like, we do a lot of donations. I mean, there's even up in Calgary when a girl had her car broken into. I mean, the whole community came around and got her and her daughter all new discs and, and then some. But, like, here, I mean, we did that and the fundraising for the baskets in Melville. Like, we do the ice bowls all yep. over the place. Yeah. Raising, so. raising mon money for the food, food banks. banks. That's a great point. You know, there's a lot of sports where, yeah, as people are so focused on how can I run an event and make a lot of money in disc yeah. golf, a lot of the TDs do it just because they love the sport. And yeah. you see more TDs, you know, making money. There's more pros making money, but it's still the bulk of the people don't play tournaments. Um, and the bulk of the people just do it because they love it. Yeah, and it's amazing. You can play every day if you wanted to. If the weather's nice, get out and play. Yeah. Oh, don't book tea times. Don't have to pay for you got to play in the so. bad weather because that's how you learn. <laughs> <laughs> I say it builds character. Yes. <laughs> and we had a, we had a little yesterday in the tournament. Yeah. But a little wind, a uh, little rain. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit of everything. It's nice having a mix of it all. <laughs> yeah. No, I love that. Um, anything else you want to say to people just about you know disc golf or what your journey's been like so far? Um, it's amazing. Such a great community like my heart just grows so much so like my mother like passed away um, back in January and the community just came in and just hugged me all around and I felt so much love um, like there's a disc out there that has dates of when they're created and I had a about five discs in the mailbox that had the date of my mother's passing wow. and it just warms my heart so much yeah. so I love the people I will be a lifer in the sport whether I'm in a walker or in a little hub around I will be a lifer in the sport for sure it's so amazing and the one advice I can say is if you have a significant other who is skeptical skeptical about playing just get them out here with other women to play because women are the most positive people out on the course. We're all about having fun and supporting and growing each other, building each other up. So it's probably the best community for sports for women, I think. Just we're all kind and Love that. fun. Love that. <laughs> it, it is absolutely one of the most welcoming com communities you'll ever get into. Yeah. Um, for not being a team sport, it's a big team. Yeah, um, it is. and a lot of people come together for even events like this. Yeah. This this is not a, a, a one person putting this on. There there's a committee and, and an entire culture that has <laughs> made sure that this has you know been a success this weekend. So. Puts in perspective because no matter how well or how poorly you play, your team is still there, your community is still there. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you know we're just gonna go out and throw more discs and make more pots. And sometimes exactly. you make some, sometimes you miss some. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good analogy for life, right? Yeah, uh, I always say. You know, boring from Simon Sinek, the finite game is your round, how you play, but the infinite game is this community. Yes. Like you said, like you're in this, your life. And, yeah. you know, by the time you're in a walker, who knows, maybe <laughs> discs, you just open your hand and they just fly on their own <laughs> or something. But, you know, it'll be interesting to see just how it evolves, the, the courses that go in, the way that things are designed and the way it keeps growing. Yeah. You know, it's, you know, during COVID, it's been a very friendly sport and yep. we've seen massive growth in Calgary and just all over the world in yes. general. And uh, it's been really exciting. So. I think you see it at Baker more than anything, all the backups. <laughs> but that's the thing, like oh, out here on the weekend, it, it's it's crawling with people. It's amazing to yeah. see. Cause, you know love what? it. Something like disc golf, it makes a walk in the park tolerable, manageable, fun. Yeah. And it, it's literally go for a walk and chase some discs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a cost efficient sport as well. That's one really big thing I think people need to know is it's as cheap as you make it. So all you need is a single disc and you can play the round. I mean, there's literally challenges based around a single disc round. So, yeah. and then you have other challenges that it's like three discs only. So you don't need a whole lot to play. And it's a great workout. I think it's under thought in how much your body is working when you're throwing, it's active. So people like, he lost a lot of weight well, just disc golfing. So. With, with, with disc golfing, you know, I, I went from around 380 pounds down to 200 and s I'm holding about 265-ish. Wow. Yeah. Um, I went from a size 44 pant to a 36. So, um, that says a lot. You know, I lost a shoe size. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's, it's, you know, that that's blows my mind. And, and really, it, it's, 
But he's not the only one. I think we oh. were meeting people on the course that said they lost like 50 to 100 pounds yeah. last year from disc golf. Another, so, another friend of our, ours, uh, uh, Adam Holmes. Who is in charge of a glow of the he, game like league. It's we amazing. We have a glow league at night here, and, and he's, he's the, the guy. He's the glow guy, you know? And he's lost 50, 60 pounds yeah. just playing disc golf and getting yeah. out and getting active and enjoying the sun. Enjoying the wind. Thing we have all these parks, and most people just come to a nice park, sit there, do nothing. Yeah. And like you said, they might walk, but this is getting you walking and doing something while you're walking. Yeah. A chance and to it, it, that. it takes that. Oh, so I really have to go for that big long walk. Like yep. this is a, a. I don't know. Probably a six thousand step. Course. Well, t yeah, today I hit a seven thousand. Yeah. So, yep. so it's probably a, a five to six thousand step course, and you play it in. So we just you know, walk two, like two, fifteen two kilometers this weekend. Exactly. Would we go walk fifteen kilometers on the pathways? Yeah. No. Or run on a treadmill? You know, I, I, you get, you're never gonna catch me on a treadmill. Never. You get used so. to the playlist and it's no longer fun. So here you're just like you hit a tree and you laugh. Oh, like, that's part of your playlist. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> the sound. It's awesome. And you can play it all the time. Like I said, we do glow rounds. There's glow leagues. It's not just in Regina, but there's all over the place. They have, I think, even Baker has yeah. glow lights on their baskets. So. Amazing. I mean, you can really. play any time that works for you and not so much but that works thing. for the sport. You can fit it in your life with, pretty soon. Pretty with, easily, yeah. you know, apps like UDisc, yeah. you can find the courses near you, whether they're within 45 minutes or an hour. Um, we're going to, to the Paw in Manitoba next weekend. Which Hope is, to hit a few courses in Manitoba. We're, we're going to do a little trip <laughs> on the way, but there's a, a small tournament going on. Um, and, you know, it's the Paw. It's, it's a little northern town yeah. right yeah. um and we're coming all the way from regina saskatchewan you know it, it, it's but that's the thing with you disc that we can take great pride in is if you click on any uh basket in saskatchewan um almost every single one of them will be gps now yeah. uh we did a lot but we didn't do them all but every single one of them will have pictures and, and that was her. Yeah, we did layouts <laughs> so that you knew what to look for. If they didn't have T uh, signs, you at least knew what to look for for your yeah. next line. And I even dipped that into Alberta, so you might see me in some of those pictures there. So, but that. it doesn't. Yeah, it's not just one person. It's everyone. And that's the thing. Is, is there's stuff. Stuff like UDisc is a massive, yeah. massive asset to this. Where you know, at Regina, we have one course. Um, that, that's one of the reasons why something like the Basket Brigade did so well. Yeah. Um, because, you know, a weekend like this weekend, yeah. there's 90 to 100 people on the course for the weekend. There's 400 people that can't play right now. Right. And yep. so right now they're going to Bona Vista yep. and they're going to Lumsden and they're going to, to, to Moose Jaw, which are all within an hour, Fort Capel, stuff like that, that are all within an hour's drive. I realize um, I did not name Basket Brigade. I gotta put that out there. Is the basket cases that I did? Oh, you see the basket cases. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the. Uh, <laughs> I have um, to correct that. I don't want to take credit franchise, for that. They'll franchise that into different cities. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know what? Like it, it's, and the, the nice thing is, is, is a tournament like this, it does put the locals, it gives them that opportunity to go and explore Saskatchewan. Yeah. Col COVID, as terrible as it has been has been an asset to the sport yeah um and to us like it, it was the most amazing summer last year the most amazing year yeah um where we we you couldn't really do much you couldn't go into restaurants you, you could barely go to walmart yeah so it was we we camped we we there was a couple times we camped in our car yeah um, but we went hit all the provincial parks we hit some regional parks um you know the biggest the most that we went into places was for groceries or gas yeah we kept our money um, in our in, in the community. Home, so in our well, the, and the neat province. thing is by committing to exploring every course, you're going to every place community once, and then in the future, you're like, oh, I want to go back to this place yes. every year. Yes. There's a lot you can do with that. So. Definitely. Love you it. know, we, we, one of the hardest courses last year for us was Eagles Creek. Yeah. It, it was, for me, it was hell. It was a hell yeah. day. We yeah. picked like the, the, the windiest day possible to yeah. go, and it's on a regional golf course. Cool. Um, we had said, you know, we'll come back in five years and try it again. We came back this After year. After the lost egg. Right, we on the way back up. from the lost egg. And we met up with some friends. <laughs> yeah. And we, we played it. And we had a blast. It, it, was, it was just seeing even our progress our, yeah. our in how we've yeah. played. Um, it, it, it's nice to see in it's one year. It's a neat year. way of doing it. So. Absolutely. Well, I definitely appreciate you guys making the yeah. time. Well, thank Good you. to see you again and finally get a chance to do this.
Uh, but yeah, hopefully you had a great time this weekend. And had hopefully a blast. you had uh, a great time. It was fun. All was those fun. rollers you were throwing. All the rollers. Sometimes <laughs> you just got to go out and just make discs fly. And that's what it's about. So awesome. Thank, Thank you. you.